Just when you think you know the direction that Fujimoto is going in, you really don't. He will throw you the furthest, fattest curveball, followed with a clean left hook to your little chinigan that you've ever known or seen in your life. This chapter is no way near where I thought was going to happen. When I read the previous chapter of 110, I genuinely thought something horrible was going to happen to Asa, and instead we are greeted with this really weirdly heartwarming exchange between Asa and Yuko. And the chapter opens up with Asa speaking to Yuko after the events of the previous chapter. Yuko was knocked on her door and Asa says, well, do you want to eat me? And we get this little scene between them where she's like, yeah, maybe a little bit. Then she decides, I just won't look at you and, you know, maybe I won't need to eat you then. And we see that Asa is just sort of, I don't know. It's kind of weird to watch these two exchange because even though they are both devils, they are still both high school students. So watching them two deal with this situation in front of them and what has happened, what I can only describe is the most most millennial way possible. They basically make jokes out of it, and it is the most millennial way that I could see any teenager in this situation sort of handling everything and the events that has unfolded here. We see Yuko saying to Asa that she's here to say goodbye and she has a distant relative who's a devil hunter, she's gonna go try and see them and see if there's maybe a way to become human again. And if I get killed as a devil, then I guess I deserve it. We see Asa saying, sorry that you made that contract with the justice devil just to save me. We see Yuko saying, no, that's not the truth. I thought if if I could turn into a devil, maybe I could be like Chainsaw Man, and maybe everyone would love me. Saying I did it for you was an excuse. And we just get this really nice, heartwarming panels. We see Yuko confessing that she had ulterior motives when I first helped you. And I thought if I rescued you, maybe you'd be my friend. Only I did it because I was friendless. And then she says, I'm the worst, aren't I? And we see one of Yuko's tentacles dropping down to the floor here. And she says, killing my neighbor and the people at the school, none of it was justice. After I made my contract with the justice devil, I was hearing so many other people's thoughts that they drowned out my own. And we see Asa saying, you know, Yuko. And then she screams Yuko. And we get a little sequence here where Yuko is trying to kill Asa, but without Yuko not acknowledging it. She didn't know that this was happening. Yuko turns around completely and utterly shocked at one of the Justice Devil's tentacles basically trying to strangle Asa, which obviously is a shock to both of them. So this obviously implies to me that Yuko doesn't have full control over the Justice Devil, right? They are sort of acting as two separate entities, the same way that Asa and the War Devil interact. They are two separate entities here, and we know clearly when the War Devil is in control of Asa because of the markings on her face. But I feel like with Yuko right now, we can see that it is two people sort of fighting for control over this body here. We see on one hand Yuko trying to fight off the urge to eat her best friend or well her only friend at the time and then also while fighting off that urge is then also slightly losing control of her own body due to the justice devil's urges to kill people and eat people and it's a very weird dynamic that we're seeing here and she realizes get the tentacle off of Asa here and she says I'm sorry I don't know what I am anymore and then she says I'll go you're my first friend so I wanted to give you a proper goodbye but are those thoughts really mine and then she goes on to say don't make a contract with the justice devil like I did Asa. They're at our school. And then she says, well, this is goodbye. And then we get this really, really nice callback from a couple of chapters ago where Yuko does the exact same thing for Asa. And she tries to give her a pair of shoes because, you know, she's barefoot. And she says, no, thanks. I don't need them. We get Asa saying almost the exact same line. If you don't need them, sell them. If they won't sell, you can just throw them away. And we see the two start to laugh at this. And it's funny because, as I said before, this is the most millennial way that I could see two high school students in this situation dealing with it, making light of the situation and making a joke about the situation. And then we see Yuko talking about this in her head, or thinking about this rather. She says, you know, I'm the worst. A bunch of people just died. I killed my own teacher, the class president, and here I am laughing at how funny this is. And we see her saying goodbye to Asa and she says, I'll be back to return your shoes one day. And Asa says, you better, right? The two smile at each other and then Yuko leaves. And we see Yuko jumping across the city and she's obviously covering some hefty, hefty distance here. This is not normal human jumps here. These are the jumps of someone who has the powers of a devil infused. It's a very interesting situation that we've got going on with uh, Yuko and the Justice Devil right now. It's not something that I think we've ever seen. It almost reminds me of when Denji is in his chainsaw form, but we're Denji has complete and utter control over the Chainsaw Devil. Yuko is constantly fighting back and forth with her devil. Also at the same time is obviously able to use her powers. But we see Yuko jumping from building to building in the cities here. And we get a little scene where she is startled by some pigeons here. And she says, if only I could read birds' minds too. She watches them fly away. And we then get this sequence here of everyone sleeping. We see Denji sleeping. We see Asa sleeping. We see Yuko sleeping. 
and we see Nayuta here sleeping and everyone looks peaceful but like I said at the beginning of the video here Fujimoto leads you in one direction and then completely and utterly U-turns gives you the one two left right and leaves you stumbling in the opposite direction because in the next panel we see that Yuko is actually been beheaded here and she is bleeding from the nose and the mouth and she says Chainsaw Man but she says it with a question mark as a figure who looks like Chainsaw Man in the shadow is holding the body of one Yuko. This is a wild wild chapter here because as far as we know this is not Denji unless some sort of time skip happened here that is not Denji on that roof we see Denji sleeping with the dogs here and then we see Nayuta and everyone else sleeping that is not Denji on that roof it can't be this boy is snoozing and then we look at the time scale of the sunrise here happening in the previous panel next to this with the buildings and then we look at the buildings and the time scale and the shadows of everything happening on the roof with Yuko whoever that is on that roof is not Chainsaw Man I also want to point out that the shadowy figure for this looks a lot more brutish than Denji. Even when Denji is in his chainsaw form, he is still a scrawny teenager. But looking at the shadows there for the forearms and the biceps and everything that we see, whoever that is looks quite the unit. We can see veins coming out on that dude's wrist. The dude's forearm looks noticeably bigger than Denji's. Denji's is quite skinny, but that dude looks quite chunky. That dude looks like he has a lot more muscle on him than Denji does. But one thing's for sure, that is definitely not Denji on that rooftop. I mean, this chapter was a wild one and definitely an imposterous chapter and Fujimoto is just once again blowing my mind because when I thought something was going in a certain direction this just completely and utterly U-turns and goes in a completely different direction. A completely wild chapter and in a very exciting chapter. I think I say this at the end of every one of my Chainsaw Man reviews but I really can't wait to see where this is going because I know from Chainsaw Man Part 1 how good that was and I just know that Chainsaw Man Part 2 is either going to exceed it or be at least on par with this and in Fujimoto I believe because this is just going to be amazing but that's enough from me let me know what you think of the chapter down below in the comments below make sure to like subscribe and if you really enjoy the video and the content that I'm putting out maybe consider becoming a member to the channel as it helps support me do what I do anyway thank you all for watching much love big kisses and I'll catch you guys in the next one Bye bye